Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, Springfield, Massachusetts. And even more specific than that, I'm in front of the amazing world of Dr. Seuss. Now, Dr. Seuss was born here in Springfield, Massachusetts, and uh, only recently, only in 2017, which I guess is recent, four years, uh, they created their own museum dedicated to uh, to Dr. Seuss. So definitely a, meant a lot to me as, as a young child. I think those are literally the first books that I can remember reading, or be, remember being read to me before I could even read. I remember uh, Red Fish, Two Fish, uh, I remember the Lorax, just um, ask, you know, asking my mother or uh, my babysitters to read them to me. So a lot of childhood comfort and childhood nostalgia comes from these books. And uh, I think they still hold up to a degree. The, the poetry, the illustrations, uh, they're still so iconic and so meaningful to me. Uh, so I figured we'd check out this museum. But first, I want to take a look around. They have a sculpture garden of Dr. Seuss characters uh, right out front here. So please, follow me. Of course, these sculptures are for enjoying with our eyeballs and cameras, not our feet and hands. We have, start off here with the Lorax. This was, I mean, almost, Dr. Seuss was almost ahead of his time on the Lorax. This was probably, I, and I'm not saying this as a, as, a, as, a, as a matter of certainty, but I feel that this was one of the first um, books that talked about environmental concerns. See that he spoke for the trees, but the trees were all cut down to make way for useless products. The tree stump says, unless. I know that really got me, you know, it was one of the first introductions I had to, you know, environmental concerns. And uh, yeah, there was some irony where the Lorax the movie came out. I never saw the movie, um, but they actually had the Lorax appear in a car commercial, which was so, so wrong. Again, it says do not climb on the sculptures, but the sculpture literally has a ramp built on it. To, so that's that's pretty encouraging to kids to have a, a ramp and then a bunch of cool characters. <laughs> you see the sculpture here, it looks like kind of a book exploding with Seuss characters. You can see thing one and thing two leaping off the page. This one's thing one. Underneath we have thing two. That's what my mom used to actually call me and my sister. Thing one and thing two. We have Sam I Am holding up his infamous green eggs and ham. I was, so the ham, the ham was green too, right? Because it was green, the, the green eggs and green ham, but it was always green eggs and ham. I wanted to, you know, with like normal green eggs. I mean, green eggs with normal ham, but I think the ham was green. Anyways, you know, the story kind of, I, I guess it was kind of about trying new things. You know, you don't know if you like something unless, uh, unless you try it. Although, Sam I Am was definitely, definitely um, give a lot of peer pressure. He put a lot of pressure on, on the main character to try something he didn't want to try. I don't know, maybe there's a lesson to be learned in both directions. Okay, now some of these I don't entirely recognize. I've not read every Dr. Seuss book. Um, this is a big moose looking creature with a flower. It's a flower sticking out of its mouth. Does anyone remember that one? We have Horton in the middle from Horton, Here's a Who. So were the Who's that Horton was hearing inside of the flower, were they the same Who's that lived in Whoville in the Grinch? And if so, does that mean the Grinch is also microscopic? And here's the man himself, Dr. Seuss, putting his feet up and relaxing here on his cartoonist's table. Next to him, one of his, one of his uh, greatest creations, the cat in the hat. Here's actually a giant book. Oh, the places you'll go come around and look at the book you can actually see that it's actually a reproduction of the places you'll go there's no illustrations but it has the entire text of the book here oh watch out 
there he is. It's the Grinch. The Grinch lurking around the corner with his dog, Max. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Over here, separate from the rest of the sculptures, have a sculpture of Yertle the Turtle. Now, I don't remember this story very well. I don't know if this was part of my collection. You can see the turtles there, all stacked up. All right, so let's head inside of the amazing world of Dr. Seuss. You can see the policeman here on Mulberry Street, and apparently Mulberry Street, the real street here in Springfield. This first room in here kind of talks about Dr. Seuss growing up as a young child. It says he lived on 74 Fairfield Street here in Springfield. So that's him and his sister. Some different locations from his life, young life, where you can try to get it around in this marble maze. Not good, not good at this. Okay. Some of the inspirations for me as a child says this castle was here in town. And there's a local statue of a sphinx that he would visit as a child. There's a button right there. Oh, it makes lion noises. And family photos when he was a child. And apparently, Dr. Seuss was allowed to draw on his walls when he was a kid. His mom actually encouraged him to do it because she thought it was a creative outlet. So here in the museum, they actually give children an opportunity to draw on the walls. Oh, let's see. A pencil. Uh, let me see how this works. Okay. Fix that eyeball there. There we go. Then there we go. There's a bakery here. It says that uh, his his grandparents. Actually, their last name was Seuss, even though his real last name was Geisel. So it's his uh, maternal uh, last name. And uh, says that grandparents on the bakery, says that his mom would actually make rhymes about baked goods, which possibly inspired his love of rhyming. Let's see here, oh, someone's been cooking up some onion, broccoli, and garlic soup. Got some baked goods, vegetables there in the sink. Said that as a kid he would go fishing with his father and dream about all the amazing fish that he could possibly catch. And this I would lead to, of course, red fish, blue fish. And what do we got here? Is we control? Oh, we changed the fish to be ridiculous colors. And then we can make him swim by. Where is oh, there he is. This is the Goose Juice factory here. Don't remember the story about Goose Juice. If you remember what story they talked about Goose Juice, leave a comment in the comment section. It's one of his most popular characters there, the cat in the hat. You can play tic-tac-toe here on this belly. Tic-tac-toe is a game where as long as both people know how the game works, no one can ever win. This talks about the Forest Park Zoo. It says that uh, 
Dr. Seuss would go to the zoo often as a child. And these uh, creatures at the zoo would inspire his future work. It's McGrew's Zoo. You can see all the wild animals there. It's just great seeing all these illustrations on the wall. I remember this illustration. I don't remember what it's from. So if you see an illustration that I don't identify, leave a comment in the comment section letting us know what it is. I think these are Sneetches. It was actually a book about racism where they had, uh, I think there were some that had stars on their bellies and some that didn't. I think the star belly ones were racist against the others that weren't. Oh yeah, it's right here. But one day it seems, while the plain belly Sneetches were moping and doping along on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped by in the strangest of cars. Yeah, so they did, they were, these, these guys were all hoity-toity, believed they were better because they had stars in their belly. These guys were all bummed out because they didn't have stars. And then this guy comes into town, I think he starts, makes a machine that gives them stars. And then uh, it just gets out of hand from there. I think there's some of them have two, started having two stars and say that they're the best. And all in all, it just shows the pure silliness that is racism. Our motorcycle here next to the mumbling mice. There's a portrait of the Grinch himself. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're entering Whoville. Oh yeah, you can see uh, his Merry Christmas. All the stockings there hung. Oh, and look, there's the Grinch. I think this was the Grinch, the converted Grinch, the Grinch that learned to love Christmas. He looks, he has a smile on his face there with Max. It says, help the Grinch bring the toys to all the Whoville girls and boys. I guess we put these toys right here. Oh, well, one of them made its way back. One of, the, one of them got away. Now I really love places where the theming extends into the bathroom area. You can see that Dr. Seuss fish there. Some sculptures involving faucets. Next section is Readingville. You can see a mural of Cat in the Hat there. And then we have all oh, these wonderful Dr. Seuss characters in here. This is Dr. Seuss's all-time most uh, popular work, The Cat in the Hat. You see Thing 1 and Thing 2 bursting out of their box. Remember the, the goldfish? Goldfish was so nervous. This is, he, he knew this wasn't right for some reason. But the Cat in the Hat, he just wanted to have fun with the kids and the ever-destructive things. This is Mr. Gump's Seven Hump Womp. Make sure it has this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven humps. Yeah, here's the Lorax. And I was saying, yeah, the book was published in 1971. So yeah, I think it was really ahead of its time when, when talking about environmental concerns. There's the the villain, the Onceler. He made these like weird sweaters that no one could possibly wear out of the truffle trees and uh, destroyed the world because of it. Help the Lorax clean up the environment. So we got some garbage there. And we gotta figure out where to put it. So let's see, bones. Bones are uh, bones are trash. Bones go in there. Watermelon rinds. Now we can comp we can compost those. And uh, a chip bag, I guess, is uh, is trash and uh, we can recycle a soda can. This is from Yertle, the turtle. You can see the turtles stacked on top of one another. They have some turtle shells over here. I guess if the kids wanna put shells on their backs. And there's a Sam I Am annoying uh, did this character ever have a name? If you know this character's name, leave a comment in the comment section. But there we have Sam I am shoving green eggs and ham in his face. Does anyone know what what, that, what this character is? This looks like a fox covered in birds, a fox on clocks, maybe? Here we have Horton from Horton Here's a Who. And look at these guys here. Do you think these guys 
are the same species that the Grinch is. This is the oh the places you'll go room. Get the kid there on top of the spire. We have these colorful bookshelves with some of Dr. Seuss's various books. Dr. Seuss's ABCs. I definitely remember that. The cat in the hat. Leave a comment in the comment section what your favorite Dr. Seuss book is. The things you can wish. Your kids can write down uh, wishes they have for the future. I'd write one down, but you know what? I'm pretty content with what I have in life. All right, let's head upstairs. Here's some personal items from Dr. Seuss. These are scouting patches. Here are actual bow ties worn by Dr. Seuss. This is pretty crazy here. These are pieces of fake taxidermy created by Dr. Seuss. These are actually handcrafted by Dr. Seuss himself. The uh, creatures that he would come up with actually had some uh, real life taxidermy made of them. Here's some uh, Dr. Seuss merch. Now it's popular as uh, Dr. Seuss was. I don't remember there being a whole lot of merchandise, but it does look really cool. Gowdy the Dowdy Grackle. There's Gowdy right there. And uh, there's a cat in a hat in a box. Right there we have a piece of storyboard from The Grinch Stole Christmas. Look at the archway here. Looks like this is supposed to be Dr. Seuss's writing room where we'd make cartoons. You can see some more of that uh, Dr. Seuss taxidermy there. Looks like a recreation of maybe Dr. Seuss's living room here. Oh, what's that? An Academy Award? Is that a that's not an Oscar. What, what award is that? A little sawfish there, up above the door. Some pictures of Dr. Seuss in later life. <laughs> that flamingo creature. This room here has an exhibit dedicated to the sculpture garden we saw out front. It's original mold for the uh, cat in the hat statue there's the casting process we have the rubber mold the wax sculpture made from the rubber mold they add a funnel to the wax sculpture and then make a hard slurry and sand model and then the hard slurry mold with bronze face yeah, I don't really understand this process. Now the ticket to the Amazing World of Dr. Seuss actually included all museums here. There's like the Museum District in uh, Springfield. So I figured we'd check out the Museum of Natural History right here. Now the docent in the Seuss Museum said that this uh, polar bear was actually from the zoo Dr. Seuss went to as a kid. It's like a real, real soft, friendly looking polar bear. Heading into the dinosaur section here, you can see some fossils. If you look up there, you can see a massive, massive uh, pterodactyl looking down on us. Up here we have this massive T-Rex looking down on us. See the Native Americans here. Looks like he's carving in that rock. This guy has uh, caught himself a turkey. Be a good... Uh, turkey dinner coming up. Entering the African section here. See some vicious African lions. Lions gazing out onto their prey over here. They have anything they'd like to eat. One of these uh, gazelles maybe? Here's a hornbill. That's what um, Zazu was in The Lion King. That's a big old elephant there. We can actually feel parts 
elephant's body. There's an elephant tusk. There's some elephant skin. Some rough skin. It's the inside of an elephant's tooth. Very interesting pattern. Oh, that ostrich just spooked me. I thought that was a person standing there. Here's man's most intense rival, the chimpanzee. You can see actually eating out of this termite mound. He says he uses the stick to gather termites and then licks them off the stick. Then this leopard here, he just waits till the chimpanzee's done eating all the termites. And then he eats him. Walked up here to the second floor, checking out the geology section. But then I just noticed this. The T-Rex from downstairs. He's peeking in the window. I'm gonna use the scale to tell my weight on other planets. Our feet right here on Earth. I am 252 pounds on the moon. I'm only 42 pounds. Oh, drop a little bit of weight on Venus. Looks like I'm lighter on most planets, although Jupiter, I am 664 pounds. I'm 231 pounds in Uranus. <laughs> Which am I the lightest? Oh, I'm the lightest on Pluto. I'm 15 pounds. You could just uh, carry me around in your backpack. Here we have a nice little map of Earth. Well, what happens if we smash it all together? We mash it together. Well, look at that. We got us a Pangea. There's where we're at right now. Go around the corner, we can actually see what's inside underneath us. I really do love these classic Natural History Museum dioramas here, the taxidermy. Let's see the seabirds on the seashore. Here we have the bald eagles. See the bald eagle there. Giant nest, but just one little tiny bald eagle chick. And then one of the parents is bringing a delicious bass for the baby to feast on. This right here, please excuse the absence of our beavers. But actually, they're not all missing. There's one beaver right there. You can see two big old black bears there. Well, actually, if we look around, we can see some other smaller animals. There's an owl. There's a chipmunk. Chipmunk over there on the rock. And then some sort of weasel right there. There's some beautiful pink flamingos in there. Oh, you can see the little baby flamingo being fed. See an adorable little family of raccoons huddled up there. King penguins. See the buffaloes here. Some smaller animals. That is a wolverine. A wolverine. Most people don't even know what a wolverine is. It's like a giant mean skunk. See different weasel-like creatures. It's a marten. And a river otter there in swimming position next to a stinky old skunk. I'm just kidding. Skunks aren't stinky. They're adorable. A little stinky, admittedly, but still adorable. Oh, chaos reigns. See the adorable fox family here. See these little, little pups, little pups having a little scrap. Just like, just like little puppy dogs. Mama Fox has brought them a delicious rabbit to eat for dinner. Look over here at this massive moose family. A couple different animals in this display. We've got the bobcat. There's a fox looking up at the bobcat. And then there's a couple uh, porcupines climbing in the tree. Several different rodents in this display. You can see moles burrowing under the ground there. And over there, we have some tiny, tiny jumping mice. This display is interesting. It's set up like a like an old abandoned house. Shows you the animals that would inhabit it. There's bats, little weasels, more bats, a rat down there. I think there's a snake coming out from under that bench. Oh, these bees. These aren't taxidermy bees. These are real live bees. Are muskrats? That's a muskrat den. 
And look at the look at the look on his face. Is he like I think that's he's like hissing at us like whoosh. Oh man. Oh man, look at this baby skunks. I want so bad to, to have my own skunk. Little creatures here on the forest floor. And a big old possum. It says downstairs here they have an aquarium. Oh, you can see some live fish down in this creek. Looks like that taxidermy bear is fixing to eat some of them. Big owl up there. Look at the base of the tree. And another little possum. Oh, hey there, Mr. Turtle. Oh, look at this. Those are a couple of beautiful sturgeons. Hey, Mr. Turtle. A couple little samples of different environments. We got coral reefs there, little clownfish. Got the mangrove swamps. A couple of giant pacus related to pir piranhas, but they're actually vegetarians. They use their mouths to crush fruit and seeds. Some ancient fishes. A spotted gar. It's a real ancient fish, the coelocanth. This is the fish that they thought had been extinct for thousands upon thousands of years. And then one was caught alive off the coast of South America. You can see it's got like meaty legs on its fins. So thank you for joining me here today in Springfield, Massachusetts, as we visited the amazing world of Dr. Seuss. A nice little museum celebrating the life of one of my favorite children's authors and i imagine a lot of other people there have also grew up with dr seuss and i'm always always up for checking out a cool uh, natural history museum uh and in fact you know i like i'd like some more suggestions on um more natural history museums more um you know kind of standard museums uh, in different locations like what what cities have the great the, the best like like science museums, natural history museums, that type of museums. Leave a comment in the comment section if you'd like to make a suggestion. But uh, thank you. If you'd like to uh, subscribe to this channel, it'll let you know when new content is coming out. If uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider donating to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that is in the description of this video. And uh, all that just kind of helps keep this train on the tracks, this boat, in the water and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.